My name is Keshwani. That's K E S H W A N I. Keshwani. We are here because we want to prepare for the GMAT. Starting today, you and I will work on the math portion of the exam. We will do all the math problems that appear in this book here, the official guide to GMAT 2019. If you do not own this book already, purchase one immediately. You're going to need it. So let's begin. Let's begin our story. Let's begin our journey. Make sure the book is in front of you. Turn to page number 146. Problem number one, as you can see, it's already on the blackboard. It says each small square is the length of one. The question simply is, what's the parameter of the figure that is shown in board, which I'm going to draw it right here. And the figure looks something like this. You're given, are you given a square? Like that goes like this and then it comes down up to here comes down and this one starts from the top something like this do you understand and our job is to find the perimeter of it our job is to find the perimeter which means we're not interested we're not interested in this part or that part there we go let's get going shall we and each side we are told is equal to one it's very straightforward so we're not going to make too much fuss about it let's count one two three and then as we go come down here and here this this part and that part is going to add up to one which we're going to write it here so one two three four five six and then this portion right here and this portion is going to make it seven eight nine again this portion right here and that portion right here will make it ten we'll write it up there so nine so far ten eleven and then from here to here will make it twelve there you go that's all it is it's a simple matter of counting the perimeter is twelve perimeter is twelve that's the next one Of course, it's number one, it cannot be that bad. Number two. In number two, we are given a performance here. Different times of performances of the of a, of a play. Thursday, Friday, we are told, and then Saturday at noon time, and Saturday at night time. Saturday at night, Saturday at noon. And these were the prices. These were the prices that, that, they were, that they were charging for different performances. $40 for a Thursday performance, $50 for a Friday's performance, $40 for a Saturday afternoon performance, and $50 for a Saturday evening performance. And these were the number of tickets sold. Number of tickets sold. It's a lot of writing for a simple thing. 200 tickets were sold, 2,400 tickets sold for Friday's performance, 220 tickets were sold for Saturday noon performance and 300 tickets were sold for Saturday night performance. And the question simply is, what's the difference? What's the difference between the maximum and minimum sales revenue? What's the difference between maximum and minimum sales revenue? Let me change the marker here because I think this marker is about to die. Well, it's very straightforward. You want the difference between the highest grossing performance and the lowest grossing performance. In other words, we want the range of our, our revenue. Well, the maximum, our maximum would be when we charge the highest price and had the most people come in. Most people came here in this performance, 300 people, and that happened to be also the highest price. So it's simply 50 times 300. That's our maximum minus the minimum. That's what we're looking for. Where did we charge the lowest price? Lowest price we charged was this here, and that also happens to be one of the lower prices. So 40 times 200. That's what it is. Very simple, very straightforward. 5 times 3 is 15, and then 3 zeros, so 15,000. 4 times 2 is 8, and then 3 zeros, 8,000. 15,000 minus 8,000, the answer is 7,000. Answer is 7,000. Answer choice D. Let's move on then. Number three. In number three, we are told that we have we have five people. I'm not going to write their names here. Just the initials C, J, M. Apparently, only four people, not five people. Only four people, and we are told that each of them draw, each draw, an average, an average. of 80 miles, 80 miles 
speech. These people, C, J, M, and R, each throw an average of 80 miles. You shouldn't, shouldn't have to repeat 80 miles each, because I use the word each here. The actual, amount, actual number of miles that each person drove actually is this. I'm just going to line them up. 72 miles was driven by C, 78 miles were driven by J, 83 miles were driven by R, M, and let's say X miles were driven by R. And the question simply is, how, much, how many miles did R drive? Given the fact that on average they all drove 80 miles, that's the average, average distance driven by each of these persons. So let's find out, shall we? Since we are told that they each drove 80 miles, let's ask ourselves, how many fewer miles is this guy driven compared to what the average mile, average number of miles each person drove? Each person on average drove 80 miles, but he only drove 72 miles, which means we have to make up these 8 miles. He's 8 miles short. This guy is 2 miles short. But this guy drove 3 miles more than he was supposed to. 8 plus 8, 8, negative 8 and negative, negative 2, negative 8 and negative 2 is negative 10. Negative 10 and positive 3 is still going to give us negative 7, which means we are still 7 miles short. But there you go, there is the answer, which means this guy has to make up 7 miles. In addition to, in addition to driving his share of 80 miles, he also has to make up 7 miles. So x drove, x, x drove, 80 plus 7, 80, 80 miles that he was supposed to drive to carry his own weight because that's what an average, on average each person was supposed to drive, that was their agreement, and he also has to make up for seven miles that, uh, that, uh, that these people were short. That's what, he, he drove 87 miles. Number four. Number four. He says that uh, we are given commission, commission is given, and the rate of commission is 15%, of five, first five hundred dollars. I'm given fifteen percent commission of the sales that I make. Of the first five hundred dollars, I get fifteen percent. Anything after that, I get twenty percent of of anything. Above five hundred dollars. Any sales that I make above five hundred, I'm paid twenty percent. The question simply is. What's going to be my commission? What's going to be my commission on thirteen hundred dollars? Let's find out, shall we? How much am I going to make in commission if I had a, if I had a sale of thirteen hundred dollars? Let's let's break it up, break it up into into two parts: the first five hundred dollars and the remaining eight hundred dollars. Because obviously, on first five hundred, I'm only going to make fifteen percent, right? So we have, so since we're going to make only 15% of the first 500, what is 15%? Well, 15% would be $50 represents 10%, and another $25 would represent 5%. See, 10% and 5%. 10% of 500, we all agree, 10% of 10 of 500 is 50. If 10% is 50, 5% must be 25. So that's $75 so far, and on $800, I'm go we're going to make 20%. We're going to make 20%. 10%. 10% of 800 is 80, so 20% is going to be another 80. Very good, that's our answer. 75 plus 160. 75 plus 160, let's find out. 5, 13, 235. We are going to earn a total of $235 in sales commission. The answer is C. Number 4. That was number four, wasn't it? Number five. Number five. Number five, we are told that we have 1,040 letters. And also happen to have 3,000 coupons. We have 1,040 letters and 3,000 coupons. Apparently, we're going to mail out these letters along with these uh, coupons. And each letter is to have two coupons. Each letter each letter, each letter is to have two coupons. All the letters were mailed out. We are told all letters are mailed out. Well, if all letters are mailed out, how many coupons are left? Well, we have 3,000 coupons. We had 3,000 coupons, 
we mail down all the letters. Well, all the letters is 1040, and since each letter takes two coupons, 1040 times two is 2080, which means we used up 2080 coupons. So how many do we have left over? 3000 minus 2000 would have been exactly 1000, so it's 920. At the, end of, at, the, at the end of the entire process, by the time we finish mailing all the letters, all 1,040 letters that we have, by the time we finish mailing all of them, it will turn out that we still are left with some coupons, 920 of them. Of course we are not left with, with some coupons because each letter takes two coupons and we had almost three times the amount of coupons. Three times the number of coupons, you understand? Let's do number six. Number six is a geometry question. But no big deal, it's very straightforward. Let's take a look at it. We are on the next page now, page number 147. We are simply asked to find coordinates of point R. Coordinates of point R. It's given something like this. We are told that this point is P, which is 0, 3. This point we are told here is Q, with a, with a coordinate of 5, 3. It goes on down. We are told that this is a right angle triangle. And we are told that this is a 45 degree angle. Let's see what we can do. And where is point R? Point R is right here. Point R is right here. Let's see what we can do, shall we? Well, we know, okay, pay attention, let's listen here. We know that the, that the coordinates of point Q are 5 and 3, which means the distance from here to here is 5. So far, so good. We also know that this is a 45 degree. If this is 45 and this is, if this is 90, this must also be 90. They don't have to show both of them. This is a 90 degree angle, this is a 45 degree angle, which means this must also be a 45 degree angle. In other words, this triangle that we see here, we have P, Q, R, let's call it S and T. The triangle, triangle S, T, R, S, T, R is an isosceles triangle. Why is it an isosceles triangle? Because this is a 45 degree angle, which means this must be 45 degree angle. It's a 45, 45, 90 angle, okay? We are, we are making too much fuss now. So distance from here to here is five because the coordinate of X coordinate of point, point Q is five. And since it's sitting perpendicularly at 90 degrees, it must be five here also. Now, if S to T, if S to T is, if S to T is 5, if S to T is 5, I mean, because it's isosceles, the distance from S to T, distance from S to T, has to equal the distance from T to R. Because it's isosceles, these two sides have to equal. I shouldn't have done all this, all this garbage. This side has to equal that side. There you go, that's what it is. Which means this distance is also 5 which means the x coordinate of point R is sitting at same as 5, and so is the y coordinate. The y coordinate is going to be actually negative 5. 5 and negative 5, which means that the answer that I picked, answer that we should pick rather, is point is E. Coordinates of points R are, point coordinates of points R are positive 5 and a negative 5. x coordinate is positive 5, Y coordinate is negative 5. That's number 7. Sometimes there is just too much writing and explaining to do something simple. In the next problem we are told that the regular price, regular price we are told is $500. We are told that the reduced price, they reduce the price by $150. question is, what's the percentage drop? What is the percentage drop? Well, to reduce the price by $150, we know, we know that 10%, we know 10% of 500 is 50. 10% of 500 is 50. They did not reduce the price by 50, they reduced the price by 150. So it's three times the amount. Well, if you can multiply this side of the equation by three, we must multiply that side of the equation by three. If 10% is 50, three times the amount, 150 must be 30%. That's it. What was the percentage drop in price? The answer is 30%. They dropped the price by 30%. And that's question number 7.
I'm going to stop giving you the letters for the correct answer because I'm afraid that I'm going to end up uh, making a mistake looking in the black uh, in the book as to what the correct answer is, le le letter is, and I'm going to end up writing the wrong letter on the blackboard. As long as you have the answer, you know what, the, what, the, what letter to pick. Number eight. Number eight. In number eight, we had given a whole bunch of numbers here, a whole bunch of fraction, one half minus one third plus one third minus one quarter plus one quarter minus one fifth plus one fifth minus one sixth. Well, what can we do? Well, what we can do here is something that in, what we shouldn't do rather, what we mustn't do here, is what they expect it to what they expect us to do. Don't try to find don't try to find the answer to this individual quantity separately. What what you what is shown here in parentheses. Don't try to do this this quantity first and that quantity that don't do that. Just open all the parentheses. One half minus one third, just open all of them. So it's, since it's plus it's not going to change the sign. Plus one third minus one quarter plus one quarter minus one fifth plus one fifth minus one sixth. And what do we notice? We notice here, we notice here that we have a negative one third and a positive one third. So they're going to cancel each other out. We notice that we have negative, negative one quarter and positive one quarter. They're going to cancel out. We have negative one fifth and a positive one fifth. They're going to, they're going to cancel each other out. So what are we left with? We're left with simply one half minus one sixth. All we have to figure out is what's the difference between one half, right here, one half minus one sixth. But in, in order to do that, we need to have the common denominator. Let's make a common denominator of six. Let's, let's, let's multiply the first quantity by three over three, so they both have the same denominator. So now we have three times one, which is three, minus one over six. Three minus one over six is two over six, which is simply one third. The answer is one third. Understand? The answer is C. And I hope. Well, let's not go there. Okay. Let's go to number nine. Let's go to number nine. When something is too simple, you don't want to get into too much explanation. In number nine, we are told that uh, a, 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 a child. A young young child is, is getting paid eleven dollars per week to mow somebody's lawn. To mow somebody's lawn. And he's also paid he's also paid four dollars per day. This is per week. This is per day. Pay attention to To walk their neighbor's dog while they are away. And we are told that they are going to be away for three weeks. They are going to be away for three weeks. The question simply is, how much money is this child going to make from the neighbor if he takes the job? Well, if they are going to be away for three weeks, they are going to be away for three weeks. So how much money is he going to make? Let's find out, shall we? Here is the mowing. And here is the walking the dog. While walking the dog, he gets four dollars per day, and they are away for three weeks. Three weeks is twenty-one days, so he's going to get four times twenty-one dollars, or four times twenty-one rather. That's how many dollars he's going to get for walking the dog, and they're going to pay him eleven dollars per week for cutting their grass, and they're going to go on for three three weeks. And this is eleven dollars per week, so it's just eleven times three. That's what it is. It's thirty-three plus four times twenty would be eighty, so it's eighty-four. Seven one hundred and seventeen dollars. He's going to get one hundred and seventeen dollars. That was question number nine. Let's move on. Question number ten. In question number 10, we are told that we have $48,000 in profit. We have $48,000 in profit, which is going to be shared 
which is going to be shared, not equally, it's going to be shared by two owners and ten employees. But the owners and the employees, of course, not going to have the equal share of the profit. Owners are going to get three times as much. Owners get three times as much. The question is, how much does each person get? Let's find out. So we have we have the owners and we have the workers. And let's let's pretend that each person gets X dollars. X dollars. So since they get rather each employee gets X dollars. Each employee gets X dollars. If, if, if each employee gets X dollars, we have 10 employees, which means they're gonna get 10 X dollars. If each employee gets X dollars, then the owners are gonna get each of them, each owner gets three times as much. So the first owner, first owner is going to get three times the amount what, what the employees get, and the second owner is going to get three times the amount, 3x. So 3x plus 3x plus 10x, they all have to add up to $48,000. They all have to add up to $48,000. 3 plus 3, 6, 6 plus 10 is 16. 16x, that's to equal 48. And 48, we know, is uh, 3 times. It's 3 times 16. It's 3 times 16. You see? And what I'm about to do next, I cannot do it unless, well, okay, actually we can do it. Let's divide, let's divide the entire, entire equation by 16. If we divide the entire equation by 16, this 16 is going to go away, that 16 is going to go away, and we have to do this here also. So it's, so it's x equals 3. x equals 3. What was the question asking? The employees or the, or the, or the owners? How many dollars? Number 9. I lost track of it. Number 10. What is the question asking? How much did each owner receive? Well, each owner received $3,000. Each owner received $3,000. And if you don't want to make it so ugly, just, just do it out. 16x. 16x equals $48,000. $48,000. And therefore, x equals 48000 over 16. And 16 is 3 times... 3 times 16 is 48, so the answer is $3,000. Each owner, so how much does each owner, each owner get? Each employee gets 3000 which means each owner, each owner gets 3 times 3000 Don't make a mistake. Don't make a mistake of forgetting at the end that what we're solving for is the amount of money that the employees is supposed to get. Each employee got X dollars, which is where we got 10X from. And if each employee got X dollars, then each owner got three times the amount of money. He got 3X and he got 3X. Let's do number 11, the last one on the page. Number 11 says that we have $500. $500 which were exchange for euros. The rate was 0.8 euro for a dollar. Each dollar got you only 0.8 of the euro. In other words, euro is stronger than a dollar. Out of which, whatever euros that we got, we spent we spent three quarter of the euros. And then we, at the very end of the journey, we spent three quarter of all the euros that we had. At the end of the journey, we converted, we converted back, converted the remaining euros into dollar at 1.2 dollars per euro. Question simply is, how many dollars did we get? How many dollars? Did we get at the end? So let's do it out, shall we? Let's do it out. How many dollars did we get at the end? Let's do it here. So in the beginning, we know that one dollar, the rate was one dollar fast as 0.8 euro. 0.8 euro. But we did not have one dollar, we had 500 dollars. So that implies that 500 dollars must be 500 times 0.8 euros. 500 times 0 0.8, 0 0.8 is simply 4 fifths. 
point eight is simply four fifth, isn't it? Divide top and bottom by five, and five will become one. Hundred times hundred times four is four hundred. Four hundred euro, rather. In other words, our five hundred dollars only translated our five hundred dollars only translated into four hundred euros, out of which, out of which we spent three quarter, three quarter of them, three quarter, three quarter of four hundred, three quarter of four hundred. Divide top and bottom by four. Four is going to go away with this. Four becomes a hundred. Three times hundred is three hundred euros. Of course, we don't have to do all that much fuss. Of course, we know that three quarter of four hundred is three hundred because a quarter of four hundred is hundred. So we got four hundred euros when we converted our money from dollar to euros. When we arrived there, we converted our five hundred dollars into euros, and we got four hundred euros out of which we spent three hundred euros. We still have a hundred euro left. Now we're going to convert it back into dollar, and we are told at that point that when we convert it back, we get one 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 dollar and twenty cents for one euro. For one euro. In other words, if you were to write it the other way around, it'll be easier. One euro, one euro is worth dollar twenty. But we don't have one euro. We have three hundred euros. We, we have three hundred euros. So multiply both sides by three hundred. That's all. Oh, sorry. We don't have three hundred. We we spend three hundred. We spend three hundred, and we have a hundred hundred euros left. We spend 300 out of 400 euro. We have 100 euro left. 100 times 1.2 is going to be 120 dollars. 120 dollars. I hope 360 is not one of the answer choices. I hope and pray to God. What number was this? No, it's not. Because you see, I, I I made a slight mistake. I just made a slight mistake just now, and I converted the amount of money that we actually spent. The 300 euros that we actually spend, I, I try to convert that into dollars. And if 100 euro, if 100 euro is worth, if 100 euro is worth, that should be 100 now, not 300. If one euro is worth dollar 20, then 100 euro, 100 euro would be 100 times the amount, would be worth dollar 20. But instead of converting 100 euros, I just convert. I was about to convert to 300 euro. In which case, instead of dollar 20, I would have gotten three times the amount, 360 dollars. Fortunately for us, 360 is not one of the answer choices, so I would have caught myself, but that's not something you want to do. That is to be careless. Pay attention. But that's what kills the score. Paying attention is very important. We're going to pick up from here. I think that's enough for today. We're going to pick up from here tomorrow and on day number two from question number 12 on the next page. Okay? Well, listen, if you're looking for a tutor, private tutor, one-to-one -one tutoring, that's exactly what I do. I provide private tutoring online, one-to-one -one on Skype. Get hold of me, you can get hold of me at my phone number here, one 808 prep or my email address, prep at AOL.com, or you can get hold of me on Skype, my Skype ID is Keshwani Prep, and I'll be more than happy to work with you to help you get ready for the exam. I'll see you tomorrow, okay? Bye now.